here, and I am super excited to connect with you about a slightly sensitive subject, which kind of feels weird to be excited about, but let me give you some context. So I'm a medical doctor and an acupuncturist, and I'm also the managing director of Make Your Mark Global, which is a branding and media agency that helps healers and coaches and therapists and doctors share their message with a global audience. But what I'm coming to you as today is not so much as a doctor and not so much as a branding expert, but I just wanted to share something that came up during one of my mentoring sessions, um, and that is about personal story. So I want to thank everyone for, for tuning in. I know that this is kind of a weird um, topic for me. Um, well, it's not a weird topic for me. It's a weird topic for me to be inviting you into um, an aspect of my personal story that I haven't shared in this way. So thank you, Prabhu, Laura, George. Thank you for being here. Shelley, Margareta, lovely to have all of these beautiful lightworkers and healers and authors. I so appreciate you. So the reason that I, I wanted to talk about sharing your personal story and, and how it can be transformative is because of one thing, all right? When, when most of us go away to medical school, we, um, we instantly think that, oh, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna save lives. And there's something that interesting that happened to me when I first started um, as a medical doctor, like once I finished med school. And what happened was I, um, I heard another doctor say that, yeah, you're, you're coming in here and you're thinking that you're gonna like save lives and you know, change the world and that's, that's all well and good but I want you to look at each patient as important. Because even if you only saved one life in your whole medical career, wouldn't that be worth it? And so I'm opening up about a certain aspect of sharing our personal story because I truly believe that when you share your truth from the heart in an authentic way, not oversharing, not sharing for pity, but literally just because you know that you're here to make a difference. When you can share from the heart authentically, you might be saving someone's life. And if you save just one life, wouldn't that be worth it? So it, okay, where do I even begin? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to uh, maybe 13 and a half years ago. And I was uh, at the pediatrician's office with my then tiny little baby. Um, I had my daughter uh, in the Washington DC area and we had this amazing pediatrician, love her dearly, Dr. Razi. And this is a woman that I so admired because she'd trained in France and trained in America. She was so well-rounded and she has this presence that is at, at both calming and reassuring, but also like uplifting. And after having been in a, a career on television as a you know, somewhat prominent um, media personality, and I actually had my baby <laughs> in a four-part documentary series, that's a, that's a story for another time, I really enjoyed the fact that with our pediatrician, she just saw me as another mother with a beautiful baby that needed to be healthy. And I have to admit that as a, a mom, as a doctor, I really felt like I had to have everything figured out. And I did so much reading and studying about attachment parenting and um, you know all, all this stuff that I felt like I needed to know in order to be a good mom. Um, I felt like I needed to have everything figured out, but I was incredibly stressed. And if anybody else had, had known what I was really going through 
on my own as a newly single mom in this transition um, from you know, my big career to being a full-time mom, then it probably everyone would have known if you really saw behind closed doors that I was depressed. And yet, I didn't tell anyone. Because I just, again, I felt like I had to have everything figured out. I needed to be this super mom. And secretly, I really kind of felt like a failure because I was dealing with, you know, the disappointment of how things um, didn't go according to my plan. We can talk about me and my planning and perfectionism a whole nother time. But what was interesting is that during one of our well child visits with me and, and my baby, um, the pediatrician looked at me and she started to ask how I was holding up. And I don't know if you've ever had one of those experiences where you can feel the emotion welling up and you're trying to hold it back and you can totally feel like your lips quivering and it's like I could feel my, my tear ducts gushing and my eyes welling up and I could feel my heart pounding because I knew I was about to lose it. And as the first tear dripped down my eye, my, my face, and I'm holding little baby Sienna, I was like, I'm okay. I'm even getting emotional now, like remembering it. <sighs> yes. Um, it was the first time that I had um, just admitted that, okay, I was having a rough time. And it was interesting because um, this pediatrician didn't look at me judgmentally. And of course, yes, I see Margareta saying that so many moms feel this way, totally understandable. Um, but and Helena, thank you. Becoming a mother can be the loneliest and scariest experience. Yes, that's how I felt inside. And the way that, that the doctor looked at me was with such compassion and knowing. And of course, she's brilliant, as I said. But it was this feeling of, okay, the gig is up. I have to just admit that this is really friggin' hard. Um, at the time, Sienna was not sleeping well. Uh, well, she would sleep well, let me get that. She would sleep well, but only in your arms. <laughs> if you tried to put her down, she would be like, no, I'm not sleeping in this little bed, you better hold me. And then I found out that the nanny, the very first nanny we had, just thought Sienna was so beautiful that she carried her, her around everywhere and never put the baby down. Like, Sienna just got used to sleeping in someone's arms. So. By the time I was on duty, it was like, why won't my child like sleep in a crib so I can get some rest? And I remember like, you know, having all these sleepless nights, feeling like, why is this not working? Like I've done everything right, the nice little bath and the bedtime routine and singing and dimming the lights and swaddling her up and she wouldn't sleep. So anyway, I was pretty miserable. And, and this pediatrician, um, she saw and she said, look, it's okay that you're dealing with all these transitions and I get that and you're a new mom and all of that. She's like, but it looks like you need some support. And it was then that she gave me two phone numbers. So she pulled out a little piece of paper and wrote down the number of two therapists. And I was like, okay, it's on. Time for me to just admit. And so I did. I um, chose one of these doctors, uh, actually chose a psychotherapist, an MD, because um, I just figured I need everything. And yes, a lack of sleep is awful when you're on your own. So yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I need help. And if I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna just be completely honest. So I, I went to this doctor and I completely opened up. I mean, I just was like, okay, I'm gonna just tell the truth. All the weird, crazy thoughts that I was having, which were really, really hard. Um, it, it, was, it, it was so hard because I felt like all of these dark thoughts, all of these um, 
feeling like I was a loser, feeling like um, I didn't know what I was doing, feeling like, oh my God, everyone must think I'm, I'm this awful person. Um, and so I just decided that I was going to confess everything. And even in my mind, I like, I fantasized about what might happen. I fantasize is probably not the good a good word, but I, I considered, uh-oh, what might happen if, if I really tell the truth? Like, maybe I need to, like, go to a hospital, be hospitalized, be medicated, because it was, it was just so scary, you know? And what was interesting is that this doctor was, of course, well-versed in postpartum depression and could help me kind of come to terms um, with that diagnosis. And yes, Taz, it does take a whole heap of courage to open up like that. Um, but at that point, I really felt like I was not at rock bottom, but I just felt like it, I had to do it. Um, I had to do it because uh, it was just that hard. So, I mean, okay, look, postpartum depression, it's a medical condition, right? One in nine women will experience postpartum depression. It happens because our hormone levels drop so precipitously after birth. Like, okay, I knew all of this intellectually. I knew that my estrogen level, pew, down. Even your thyroid level after pregnancy, pew, down. So, of course, you know, I, I would be feeling that. But um, I, I realized after talking with this doctor that hiding what I was going through was not only bad for me, but it was potentially bad for my baby as well. And that was just something that I was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta attack this full, you know, head on. And okay, all of that is fine. Um, I did get help. I got the support that I needed. I got new routines in place. And it was one of those things that um, I know saved me and my life. Save, probably saved my baby's life. And now y'all know she's 13 years old, grown, <laughs> completely healthy, <laughs> right? Um, she's, she's fabulous. And I'm so, so, so grateful that I was able to, to get past that. But what's interesting is that, you know, having this high-powered career and being a medical doctor at that time in the United States, I really was under the impression that I did need to be perfect. I wanted to always portray a perfect image to my patients. I thought that that's what I needed. Well, one for sure, as a TV doctor, I'd always needed to be polished and, and whatnot. And, and then as a medical doctor, I felt like my patients were coming to me for, to fix their problems or heal their diseases. So, you know, you can't show any weakness. But ultimately, I realized that sharing your personal story and your struggles doesn't doesn't make you weak it just shows that you are human um, it shows that you've got issues to deal with just like anyone else but in the overcoming it shows your strength and I wanted to have this conversation because as I was talking with this other coach she was telling me like I don't know I mean if I share too much will people think I'm credible anymore? Or if I open up about my, my struggles, are people gonna think, oh, it's all, about, it's all about her now? And I was like, no, it, that's, that's not really what happens. And for me, I, I, I can only talk about my own experience now, having gone through it, and many of you beautiful people who are chiming in with such, <laughs> such sweet words. Thank you, Willow and Malin and Ofkia. Um, yeah, we have to, yes, I love that, Ofkia, we have to show up as a human being. We're not, we don't need to be polished. I love that, Ofkia. Like, our clients, whether you're a healer or a coach or a therapist, our clients don't want us to show up as this perfect robot. They want us to show up as a human being. And one of the, the number one things that I found is that when you're willing to share, and I'm not saying everybody has to get on TV or Facebook or on stage or in a book, hear me out, um, but when you're willing to sh share 
who you really are and the experiences you've gone through and overcome. Do not use the stage to work out your drama. <laughs> That's like one of our rules <laughs> at Make Your Mark Global. Like this should be stuff that you've healed from. But when you can share about it, it creates recognition. So that's one of the, the top five things that is a benefit of sharing your story. You will find that people can identify with you more because you're being human. And Jill, what is she saying? Dr. Juicy Jill Stocker, what's up lady? You say, I felt the same way as a physician. I felt that it would make me look incompetent and it actually has made you look more competent to help others with hormone imbalance. I've seen the light in my patient's eyes when they realize I get it and they're not alone. Thank you for sharing that, Jill. Yes, yes, and I know that's a big part of your message now. Oh, you know what? You should jump on Skype if you have time. Do you have time? I know you're, let's see, it's like 9.15 in LA and Jill is probably going in to help someone get their hormones balanced. But if you have time, let me know, Jill. I'll bring you on on, on Skype because that, that, it, that message that you're saying right there, you are not alone, is huge. Like seriously, because so many of us do suffer in silence. And when you suffer in silence, you feel alone. And just like Margareta was just saying, when you don't have support or you, know, you feel like you have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, you can feel like the whole world is out to get you. Oh, is that Jill? Maybe Jill's gonna come on and speak to us. Um, but that is, so that can be really so scary when you feel like you're absolutely silence. all alone. And, when you and ultimately, I don't want people to feel like they're alone. I want people to know that we are all human. Like, um, it, it's, yeah, we're human. We're not robots. Um, I love what you're saying here too, Helena. It's super interesting how we fear sharing as if it's weak, when to the pertness witnessing the sharing, it's extremely bold. Yes, and that is exactly how it's been. It's been, um, that's how it was received from me. Um, I know that Jill actually said that once, uh, so hopefully we can get her on Skype. I don't know if that's, if that's gonna happen. but. It isn't, it isn't always seen as a weakness. It can actually be seen as courage. And so that, I want you to consider that. If you have been kind of holding back, there is, there is a, a deeper connection. And that in initial recognition that you and your client have, like it, one of the funniest things that happened was um, when I was back in, in DC, this girl, um, came up to me that I had seen on a weekly basis. And after she heard about what I had been struggling with, she said, you know what? You just like us, you regular. <laughs> and it was kind of a funny way of saying it. Um, but it was like, yeah, I am. Yes, I have the degree. Yes, I you know, have done all this certification and all of that stuff and the training. But yes, I am a human being like everyone else. Um, so Jill, are you, I see you saying that you're here. I don't see you on Skype. I think my Skype might be messing with me for some reason. Um, I'll see if I can bring Jill on. But in any case, that initial recognition is one of the things, uh, one of the benefits of being willing to open up. So if you're a coach or a therapist or a doctor or a healer, then even if you're just gonna share it in you know, your private one-on-one -on -one sessions, yeah, it can actually help people identify with you. And I think the other thing that, um, that is a, a big one in that area is what I found is that in all of us who are doing online branding and marketing and trying to attract new clients, um, I heard someone say that um, if people can relate to you, or they can relate to where you have been, they will follow you to where you are going. And so my whole 
mission now is all about liberating your authentic self, helping people to launch an authentic personal brand. Like that's where we're going, sharing our message with a global audience. And so when I've, what I've found is that when people recognize where I've come from, living in a box, <laughs> you know, the doc in the box as a TV doctor, living this very buttoned up life in an inauthentic brand image, and now seeing me, I mean, I am super comfortable. Um, it wasn't instantaneous though. Um, on my private life, I got things together, I healed, I'm rocking life. Then I moved to France and things changed even, even more being in this beautiful French Riviera. But what was interesting was I was giving a talk in Copenhagen and what's up to all my CPH Denmark folks. Um, I was in, in Copenhagen a few years ago and I was invited to speak about personal branding and how to launch an authentic personal brand. So of course I was sharing my story about how being at, um, uh, at Discovery Channel and building up this image and uh, eventually uh, going on the Oprah show and all of these other you know, really great places, um, I was sharing on stage how my first image as a uh, brand was not super authentic. And then I shared how um, coming out with my true self, which is a little woo-woo, a little spiritual, um, people were able to then get a sense for who I really am. And so what was interesting was as I was on that stage, somehow, I, somehow the conversation kind of deviated. Um, Uh-oh. She says I'm getting static on my mic. Are other people getting static on my microphone? So one of the things that happened when I was in Denmark doing this event, um, I, I was talking about my brand, I was talking about how I made this transition, and then I think somehow I was in the flow. You know how that is as a, as a speaker? <laughs> I see we've got the amazing Taz Thornton and some of my other people in our speaker circle. You know how it is. Sometimes when you're past nerves and you're just in the flow, things start coming out of your mouth. You know, I know you, Helena, have said this, that when you get off stage, sometimes you're like, I don't even know what I just said. Well, I happened to have this moment of recognition that I was going left. I was going down a rabbit hole and I, I stopped myself and I apologized to the audience. Um, Cause I was, I, this happened twice. I was in Aarhus in, in Denmark and in Copenhagen. And I was like, okay, what is going on with me this weekend? Why am I like sharing this stuff? So I apologized to the audience and everyone was like, no, 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 it's okay, we're good. Um, and whatever, I was like, okay, great. Well, at the time uh, that I got off stage, <laughs> there were people kind of lined up to talk to me afterward. And uh, I, I got to this woman and she had tears in her eyes. So I was kind of, confused because um, I'm like uh, I was just presenting on branding why is this lady tearing up okay so she came up to me and she said I could really see myself in your story and I was like really what part and she said yeah I have been hiding my true self and I went down a career path that ha she said had her feeling really locked in and she wasn't being true to herself And so she thanked me for sharing my personal story. And I'm like, oh, I hadn't intended on sharing that aspect. But again, when I opened up this, this Facebook Live, um, what would it be if you changed one life? What would it be if you saved one life? Again, I'm not saying to milk your story in an inauthentic way. But after that weekend, I, I recognized that the connection that people were making, and this happened repeatedly, I recognize that that con connection is what we all crave. We all crave connection, recognition with fellow humans. So yes, people may hire us because we're the expert in such and such, but it's really about um, connection. And so, What I also found is a benefit of being able to share your personal story is that it also breaks down these barriers of superiority. And 
I don't know about your country, but some people in America, at least when I was growing up as a doctor 20 years ago, there was still this sense of putting doctors on a pedestal. And I feel like if you're playing from this um, superiority standpoint, like if you're preaching from some elevated uh, position, sometimes that can make you seem untouchable or unrealistic or the, the status that you have for many people is unattainable. And what I found in my own world was that when people saw me as a human, and yes, I still have the degree and all those skills, but they felt like they could open up from the heart and they could be more honest um, and, and candid. And, and that's huge. And mainly because people won't trust you if they can't relate to you. So um, I see Dr. Juicy Jill is calling me on my phone because it's apparently not working on my computer. And I don't know if I can patch you in over here, darling. So that's not going to work. Um, so d is this making sense? I mean, I, of course, I run a branding and, and media agency. So of course, I want people to keep sharing their stories. That's why I created the company. Because one of the things I recognized is I'm just one person. But when people were starting to relate to me and opening up to me and it was changing their lives, I realized everybody has a story. Like I work with some amazing healers and therapists and coaches, these light workers who have deep insights on how to do a lot of great stuff. And I figured if more people knew about your gifts and your abilities, then how many more lives might we be saving? Um, so yeah, I am on a little bit of a, a crusade. I want everybody to be able to get this, this feeling. But the last benefit that I'll share is this. What I noticed in myself when I really came out the box was when, uh, in, when I was at the University of Monaco, and again, you want to talk about feeling like you needed to be on, you know, I hosted this thing for the late... Princess Grace Kelly and, you know, Prince Albert is there. You have all these dignitaries. And working in Monaco, especially at the university, I felt like, again, I was getting back into that feeling like I needed to be perfect kind of mode. So when I was invited to give my first TEDx, it was right at the same time that I was feeling like I wanted to share more and get back into my work. Um, and so as I did, I accepted the invitation to give that TEDx. I said, okay, it's time for me to come clean. It's time for me to share my truth. Because if I'm now gonna be seen out in the world again, I don't want people to have that old image of me where I was always trying to be so perfect. I want people to know the real me. And, and that is exactly what I did on that TEDx stage. It was scary as heck. My daughter was in the audience. My colleagues from the university were in the audience. And yes, even my students uh, from the business school and uh, my psychology class were there. But what was interesting was once again, when I got off that stage, which I really just did for me, because it's like, you know, I know Helena, you know this, this saying that we're only as sick as our secrets. Like we waste a lot of energy stuffing down our emotions, hiding things, and even, um, yeah, keeping secrets or telling lies. It uses up so much energy that can actually hurt us internally, like illness, right? And so for me, I found like I just needed to do it for myself. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna, <laughs> saying my bravery is inspiring. But I was really doing this for myself. I didn't know that it was going to inspire people until suddenly I was starting to get these emails and these text messages from people who saw that TED Talk, and they were like, wow, your story is my story, and now I finally feel like I'm not alone, and there's a way to actually talk about these things. And for me, the biggest, the biggest takeaway from sharing your personal story, whether it's on stage or in a book or whatever, is that it's freeing for you. It's healing for you. It allows you to finally just be your true self. And that sense of authenticity gave me so much more power. And, and I know that that's what, what so many of our, our 
authors have said. So um, let me look at these comments. Sorry, you guys are being so sweet. I'm sorry. I'm like kind of emotional and I'm all over the place. Karen Joy says, Time to Rise. That's TTR. That's this book back here. Time to Rise, the beautiful Karen Joy Allman in Maryland. Time to Rise came just after I had the courage to leave my job and gave me the courage to live my truth. What? What? Awesome. It also gives me more credibility with my clients. I cannot wait until our next books are published. So excited. Oh, Karen, you have, I've told you this before, you have been such an inspiration to me. I met Karen Joy before I left the Washington DC area and to see your transformation and how you have maintained your mindset, like you are the poster child for true resilience and holistic healing. So I'm so grateful that we stayed connected and that you're in these books because yeah, having, being able to like finally say your truth out loud does give you courage um, and it's awesome. And yes, Margareta, having a tribe that has your back and shares as honest as yourself. And Margareta is this beautiful hypnobirthing doula in Italy. And yeah, you have been sharing as well. Like Margareta, I'm like saying brava, brava, because I've seen you now on Facebook after coming to our events and speak from the heart, one of our workshops, like you really do speak from the heart. And I know that it's helping so many people who may not have ever heard about the idea of hypnobirthing. Um, hey, and we did an interview on that. You should be sharing that interview, right? Like, I love how so many of you have like, you've done the books, now you're doing speaking engagements and you're hosting your own shows. Um, I know Dr. Juicy Jill has like, gone completely out of the box since she's been like connecting with this community and just doing amazing things. So what I've noticed for myself and for my clients is that coming out of that box, having a supportive tribe who gets you, who mirrors back to you, like that's the thing that we don't think about. We think that when we share that it's going to alienate us that people are gonna think you're weird or bad or wrong and that's not what happens. It actually is very attractive and you know what we found is that it helps people um, increase their attractiveness to clients. It increases their sales for books and workshops. Now again, that's not really the principal reason you do it, but yes, Jill, it's actually helping other people. Um, and that's what it does. It will end up helping you get more bookings on stages uh, and on other shows. I know that when we're booking talent for shows or, or uh, my events, if someone, if, if you have two coaches who have a similar background and they're both you know, really great, the person who's gonna share from the heart is gonna connect with my audience better. And of course that's someone I'm gonna choose over someone who's a little bit dry and just you know, does like I did, works on PowerPoint slides and whatever. So it's got to be, it's got to be authentic for sure. But by owning your story, you will have the power and you'll still use discernment. You're still going to use good judgment on how much to share and with whom to share. But it's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about what we're doing at Make Your Mark Global, hosting events where beautiful people like you are getting on a plane and coming to the south of France for our Stories with Soul life writing workshop or the, um, the GLAY, the Global Luminary Activation Experience, Speak from the Heart, and the newest addition to the Make Your Mark Global collaboration is with the incomparable Taz Thornton from the UK. She's coming on over for an event called Uncloak Your Brand. So it's all about increasing your visibility and your income and your impact, but from a really authentic place because I know that the power that we gain by really having that authentic connection to our truth is gonna make us even more powerful and impactful in our healing or in our coaching work. So I love that you all have, have been here with me. Um, I know some of the people in our VIP Global Luminary Academy, thank you all for your support. Um, I love working with these other luminaries who are also bringing their, their work and their words to the world. So, hey, if this resonates with you, if you know someone else who's been struggling with a health challenge or a psychological challenge, and you know that unburdening their soul could help them, then share this video with them. And 
if you you know want to get involved with some of these beautiful people um, in our tribe then you know check out what we're doing at make your mark global from the books that we're publishing like right now we have two opportunities for you to get in on one of our group books like we did with Time to Rise and Magic and Miracles and Life After Trauma. We're doing a book on holistic healing. Um, there's still spots available. And we're doing a book on manifesting love. Still some spots available there. Um, so I will post the link um, in a moment or at the end of this broadcast. Wait, maybe I actually, no, I don't have the link, sorry. Um, but anyway. I would love to, to work with you on that. Um, all of the transformational programs that we offer at Make Your Mark Global are exactly that. They're transformational. So even though they're designed to help you in business, they're always coupled with the instruction, insight, and love that is needed to help you um, be that transformational leader that you were born to be. And so everything that I've learned from positive psychology and neuroscience and as a physician doing Chinese medicine, I bring that into the professional programs for publishing and marketing and branding because I know what it takes to maintain that clear, clean vessel. Believe me, working in Hollywood for all those years, <laughs> you have to be spiritually grounded to not get... Yeah, anyway, I'll leave that there. Um, Thank you, Sarah, for giving us, let's see if I can, yeah, pop that on the screen. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sarah. So if you go to this bit.ly link, Health Co-Author, um, that's one of our books, which is about holistic healing. But isn't there a co-author page that has both or all three books that we have going on, Sarah? Because we also have the other book, the Manifesting Love book. Um, anyway, you can always go to makeyourmarkglobal.com and you can find out what we're up to, okay? So thank you guys for, for sh sharing. And I love, I love, love, love Malin saying that writing and sharing your story has had a healing effect. And you, lady, are so, so friggin' powerful. It was awesome to see you on stage um, when we were in Spain. And so that's what I'm saying. It, like, I'm hanging out with all these powerhouses, and yet we're all going through transformation and leveling up. And so if you know that you've got something inside of you or you've heard someone say, oh my God, your story could make a great book or movie, <laughs> then maybe this is your calling. Maybe this is your calling to finally own it, to really start looking in. I mean, fortunately, what we're doing at, um, at Make Your Mark Global is we're helping people uh, also do the background work. Like, you have to do a little bit of background work. As I said, I don't want you getting on stage and using the stage as your therapy session. That's not what this is about. Processing trauma, if you've had some trauma, or just re rewriting your internal narrative, um, that's gonna be a big part of what we're doing um, with the expansion of Stories with Soul. So the life writing course, where you're writing your own personal story, has usually been only reserved for all of my authors at Make Your Mark Global, but now we're opening it up and having a special one for the general public. So for anyone who wants to use life writing or the psycho psychological term is personal narrative therapy, it is therapeutic, it is healing to start writing about your life journey, even if you never share it. Like you don't have to get on stage, you don't have to publish it in a book. So I'm teaming up with the beautiful Ofkia Takens from the Netherlands to um, bring the expanded life writing course to the world. So stay tuned for that. Well guys, I, I'm, I've been here a little bit longer than I anticipated. It is so, so, so good to connect with so many beautiful souls. And I honor you and commend you for showing up and stepping up and owning your story in such a way that you can share it with people from the heart and authentically. Having been touched by you and so many others, I know that you are changing lives. And that's why I'm so committed to helping you get to that next level. So thank you all for being here. I am so, 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 so excited to see some of you in the upcoming weeks at one of our events. And just know that no matter where you are in the world, remember this, you are a gift to the world. 
So share your presence with passion. Much love and I will see you again soon.